Would you bow your head for just a moment, please? Holy Spirit, as always, we depend on you for anything and all things at Messenger Church. As I enter into the Word of God, things that you birthed in me for today, may we have an open heart to receive what thus saith God. I'm so thankful for our Heavenly Father's love and direction and all that you are to us, for each Father that is here. May the Word of God impact us as it's imparted to us to become armed for who you are and what you are, and armed for the purpose and the service of the kingdom of God as we continue on this journey, as we continue in this battle, as we continue in this phase, this fight, God armed for you, armed for the blessings of God. I praise you and thank you for that anointing. Everyone said amen. amen. Would you just for a moment continue with your head bowed as we honor the Holy Spirit and stay sensitive to what the Lord would have us to hear or what is to be said in the next few minutes. I worship you, Jesus. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I glory Mahashiki Indokoya. Bitulaka ish nako oshantikina. Hallelujah. Just worship with me for a moment. Just worship with me. I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel that anointing, but just worship. Just worship. We do not want to confine him nor his leadership. If someone needs to be healed, you can be healed as I'm just speaking. If you need encouragement, you can be encouraged as I'm speaking. Just to allow the Holy Spirit to have divine, full, and free flow. Right now, right now, right now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great big hand clap. How about it? Will you? <laughs> Woo! Ha ha! Do you love Jesus? Do you love the Holy Ghost? Do you love the person sitting next to you? Oh, my goodness. That sounded good. All right. I'm going back to where I was last week. As most of you have found out, I'm not into topical preaching on these kind of days. That's why I have these little presentations, all right? But I'm dealing with this subject of armed and dangerous. I really thought it would be a one-sermon uh, situation, but it grew into more than that. And so I'm not going to rush, all right? We're going to get right into it, and I, I want to talk to you. Now, for me to, uh, me to go beyond where I was, I've got to make a few statements. I've got to link you up to where I was last week. And so we're going to start off with this statement. Outlook determines outcome. All right? Outlook determines outcome. A believer must have the right attitude if he is to live the right life. Amen. Now you can amen those statements. There's no problem. All right, I, I, I think maybe you amened them last week, and, but this is another day, so you can amen them again. All right, thank you, fast learners. Praise God. All right, outlook determines outcome, which brings me to a lead-in question. How do you view yourself? How do you see yourself? You will never rise above your own view of yourself. It doesn't matter how many people love you, like you, compliment you, tell you how good you are. If you don't believe you're good, then you're never going to rise above your own view of yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. All right? Amen? Now, you need to be like me. I get up in the morning, go look myself in the mirror, and say, Self, you're the best looking thing I've seen today. But then again, I'm the only one that I've seen today. So that's not really a stretch, okay? I have no problems telling you that I like me. 
All right, I don't mind telling you that. You say, that's pride. No, that's honoring the God that created me. I've never felt like I had to add anything to me to make me better. All right, now we're not talking about spiritual stuff here, okay? <laughs> Amen. I, I just, I like me, you know, I, I'm working on me. I still got some stuff I've got to get worked out, but I still like me. And, and therefore, if I like me, then there's other people going to like me. Now, there are parts of me that I would shift and shuffle just a little bit if I could. Matter of fact, I announced about seven years ago that for my birthday, I wanted my sons to give me enough money to have a tuck job and a lift job and a shuffle job. Well, the money never came in, so I've been sagging ever since. But that's just part of life. Somebody said, that, that bo- does that bother you? Not at all. I've lived long enough to sag. Okay, so I'm not going to get too carried away with, with any of that. All right, every wrinkle I've got, one of y'all had something to do with it. Every gray hair I've got, some of y'all had something to do with it. It's just part of pastoring. Some of you more than others. You say, well, who are the some? I'll keep that between me and God. All right. But what I'm saying is, how do you view yourself? Do you view yourself as a victim or a victor? Amen. On the count of three, you tell me. One, two, three. All right. The victor's outdone the victims. But that's the way I wanted to hear it, so I heard it that way where you'd have said it or not. Okay. But are you a victim or a victor in your viewpoint of yourself? Living with a victim mentality or a victor mentality is a choice. No one, no one can make you walk the walk of a victim, nor can they move you into the attitude of a victor but yourself. You say, what about the devil? Well, what about the devil? He's just simply a devil, okay? He doesn't have any authority over you. Now, I'm not going to tell you he doesn't have power because then I would be lying. But I will tell you that what is in you is greater than anything he's got in him. So I, I, I deal with the fact there's a devil. I also deal with the fact that there's a few people that have a devil. Maybe more than a few. I don't run across them too much because I run with y'all. And so my <laughs> the consensus is, is y'all don't have one. You may be bugged by one every now and then, but it's, it's really that you, not that you don't have one that's important. The important thing is one that doesn't have you. That's the important thing, all right? But you've got to make up your mind. To get over this, this victim mentality stuff, you say, how do I know I have it? Because you're always blaming someone else for where you are right now. What happened to my amens? I didn't even get a head nod on that one. You see, you are where you are because you have chosen to allow yourself to be there. The Bible says you're an overcomer. By what? The blood of the lamb and what comes out of your mouth in testimony form. Now, if the Bible says you're an overcomer, okay, then you are an overcomer. Everything else is going to pass and change, but the Word of God is never going to change. If the Word of God says you're saved, you're saved. If it says you're healed, you're healed. If it says you're an overcomer, you're an overcomer. You may not be smart enough to recognize it, but God said it, and so you are. But until you start seeing yourself that way, you will always walk with a victim mentality, always dwelling on what someone else has done to you instead of dwelling on what Jesus has did for you. Undoubtedly, that's not our running, foot stomping, preaching. You know, but that's just the way it is. I've been a victim of tongues before. I've been a victim of attitudes before. I've been a victim of, of, of uh, I've been punched right out on the church parking lot by somebody that didn't care for me too much. 
I've been through all that. I've even had people to tell me that some, something told me, and this person was sitting right on the front pew the whole time you were singing to come up and jerk your guitar off your neck and beat you to death. Well, he didn't do it. He got saved. I had one guy to show up in an outdoor crusade I was preaching one time, stood on the outside, point, I'm up in the pulpit, pointed his finger right at me, and went, Pashu! I just looked at him and kept preaching. Next thing I know, he's eyeballing me and he goes, what am I supposed to do? Run like a turkey or keep preaching? I just realized that day, some people don't like me. But you know what? I don't think it's really me that they don't like. They don't like what I preach. They don't like what I live. They don't like what God has done in my life. And the devil would rather take me out than get me to finish uh, what God has raised me up to do. You said, did you live in fear over that? No, I just kept preaching. Why? I am an overcomer. I am a victor. And if God can't cover me, I can't be covered. Uh, so I'm going to live with a victor's mentality. All right. Now, we arm ourselves. This is all last week, so don't count it on my time against me today. We must arm ourselves with facts to become a victor and not a victim. Arm yourself with some facts. If all you do is listen to hearsay, you're going to live with that victim mentality all the time. I mean, there are people that will keep you down if you listen to them. My advice to you is don't hang out with people that make you feel worse when you walk away from them than you did when you walked up to them. I may put up with that garbage once. I may even put up with it twice. But I'm not going to put up with it third, the third time. I am not dumb. All right? You may make me feel kind of bad the first time, and I think, all oh, that was just an accident. The second time, you may not be any better, but the third time, you're not going to get a chance. I'm not going to hang out with people that talk different than I believe. I'm not going to hang out with people that tries to nullify my vision, nullify my dream, nullify my anointing. It is not going to happen. If I'm sick, I don't hang around with people that don't believe in healing. If I'm bound, I don't hang out with people that don't believe in being free. I may shake your hand, hug your neck, smile at you, but I'm not going to make you my buddy if you don't walk the walk of agreement with me. When I'm sick, I just need two or three to agree, and I'm going to walk out of my sickness, and I'm not going to let you keep me near death. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's a good place to do it. I have no problems picking my friends. All right, I really, really don't. I, I, I just, I think you ought to arm yourself with fact. Fact number one, we found out we will all face difficulties in this life. Being a child of God doesn't mean you're never going to have a problem. You may go around acting like you don't have one because there's so much pride in you that you don't want to admit that you don't feel like you're going to make it through the day. But you got to understand something. People that are never sick never need healing. People that are never bound never need freedom. That's where I had problems with this confessing method they got into 20 or 30 years ago. All you had to do was lay your hand on it, claim it, and confess it, and it's automatically yours. I had problems with that, all right? They say if you get prayed for, you're healed. It doesn't matter if you're throwing your guts up, you're still healed. I'm sorry, I don't believe that, okay? If I'm healed, I'm going to quit throwing up. I'm not going to say I'm something I'm not. Matter of fact, if I find a river, I'm going to duck seven times. The seven times I come up, I dunk. <laughs> the seven times I come up, I'm going to be healed. In other words, I'm going to go back the second time if it doesn't work the first time. And then if it don't work the first time, I'm going to go back the third time. You say, what are you saying? This is what I'm saying. There are difficulties in this life. You're going to face situations that you don't particularly understand why you're facing them. But get this, God tempts nobody. If he did, he lied in James. 
It's not God that throws bad stuff in your way. Now, you're allowed to face stuff like that, but you never face it for it to destroy you. If God allows you to face it, you face it to help you to understand that it's only in him that you're going to get out of it. And without him, you'll never get out of it. That's the reason. That's a simple reason. I don't have time to preach that, but we all are going to go through stuff. I've been healed of some tremendous things. I really should be dead, according to doctors. All right, I had this, this, this heat stroke that some of you have heard about when I was doing some meetings and got myself overheated, drank a little bit of water, and uh, everything in me started curling inward. The doctor told me after they got me to the emergency room, he said, it's like pouring uh, cold water in a hot radiator. You just ex- almost exploded on the inside. But let me tell you something. That doctor said I'd never be able to put up with heat again. For the rest of my life, heat would put me back into that stroke. I want to tell you something. That's been over 40 years ago. And, 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 and for about a month or maybe too much, I'd get hot. My body would start curling back up. But finally one night down in South Georgia, I'm sitting out in the bus in the lounge area. My team is inside doing what we're, I'm supposed to be doing. I'm sitting there with my arms kind of pulled in from some heat. I said, Jesus, I've seen you heal cancer. I've seen you heal heart conditions. I've seen you open blind eyes. I'm sitting out here in this bus, uh, not able to be out there doing what I'm doing. Uh, I'm getting myself up. I'm going in there and I'm getting a miracle. Folks, I walked in that place kind of like this, uh, sat down on a piano stool. Uh, All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost hit me. I've not had another problem since. Why? If God be for me, it doesn't matter what hell is against me. We all, my God, uh, we're going to overcome. I I said we're going, we all have problems. Problem with most people is they're always trying to figure out who has the worst problem. It don't matter. Get over it. Look at somebody and say bad times are coming. But fact number two has got to be kicked in with that. All right. This is all still last week. Fact number two is you, you've got to start knowing that you never have to lose. I like that. I mean, that makes me want to run around the building, but I got to preach. So I just point at one of y'all. When I point, take off running. Well, where's my amens on that one? And when you run, run up around the balcony. Let's see what kind of shape you're in. Alex is in good shape. He's on this special diet. Maybe I ought to make him run around the balcony. Oh, here, wife of the, oh yeah, get it, get down with yourself. Hallelujah. No, no, let me tell you something. You've got to develop a winner's mentality. It doesn't matter what the devil says, you're a winner. Amen. It doesn't matter what hell throws your way. We've got to develop that winning mentality. And that's a fact, folks. That's just a fact. All right, bad stuff's going to happen. It's not always going to be good. You're going to put up with some stuff. There's people going to look at you like you're half crazy. All right, but you're the winner. Develop that mentality of winning. All right, that's, that, that's kind of where we were last week. Now, today, I want to deal with understanding uh, our authority and power. All right, understanding our authority and power, not just power, not just authority, but you've got to get this. Now, now listen to what I'm about to say. The lack of understanding the authority that God has given his church has been the cause of, of a lot of powerful people walking in defeat instead of victory. I'm going to say that again. We need to hear it. The lack of understanding of the authority that God has given us, his church, has been the cause of a lot of powerful people walking in defeat instead of victory. Now, the word powerful wasn't there until about 15 minutes before I came out here today. I had in there these words uh, that that lack of understanding authority has caused a lot of people 
all right, to walk in defeat instead of victory. And it's like the Holy Spirit just nudged me there. And he said to me, he said, listen, it's not just people, it's powerful people. People that have power that live in defeat every single day of their life. And he said, the reason is they don't understand the authority that I've given them. And and you say, what are you saying? If you're a Holy Ghost filled child of God, you've got power in you. If you're a child of God, you've got power in you. But knowing that does not necessarily mean that you're victorious just because you've got power. There's a lot of spirit filled people that stay down more than they get up. There's a lot of spirit-filled people that stay discouraged more than they stay encouraged. Why? Because they don't understand authority. You've got the power. You can't have the Spirit of God and not have the power. Oh, oh, Brother Paul said over in, in, in Acts, and there's debate on who, or Luke, there's a debate on who actually wrote Acts. It don't really matter to me. But according to the book of Acts, he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so if you've got that Holy Ghost, get this, get this, you got to get this. If you're born again, you've got that Holy Ghost inside of you because you can't be born without the Holy Ghost. You can't do it. And if you got him in you, you are a power-filled child of the living God. Now, now, with that being a fact, why do we go around looking like, you know, there's no hope? It would amaze you at the people that get depressed over CNN news and some of the junk that they spew out. Or any of this new stuff going on today? I've never seen a spirit of hate hit a nation over a president in all of my life. May I tell you something? It doesn't really matter who ends up in that office. God put them there. That's what the book says. He places kings and princes in positions. And I don't know how you look at it, but I kind of think God knows what he's doing. And according to the book I read every single day, the steps of good men are ordered by God. And all things are going to work for the good uh, of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So in essence, folks, uh, though I want conservative men on the Supreme Court, though I want godly men to set in positions over our nation, the one thing I want to make sure of above all of that is that God the Creator is still worshipped in a nation uh, whose very existence uh, was founded upon the kind Concepts and precepts of the Word of God. I will preach it, believe it, vote it, stand for it, and binding it, devil that tries to alter that given fact. Spirit of hate everywhere. Spirit of hate everywhere. Church people. Church people. You know, I don't mind people marching against abortion and drugs and marching against everything. I don't mind that at all. I don't do a lot of it. But let me tell you something. Don't get mad at me. I I don't get into politics too much. Go ahead and march. All right. It's all right. But I'm going to tell you something. You'll do more by praying than you will marching any day of the week. You get a hold. Now, I'm not talking about this jet age prayer stuff where you get down about as fast as you get up. I'm, back when I, I got into this, folks, we had this term called praying through. How many of y'all remember? We prayed through last night. Somebody said the other day, what does that mean? Well, what do you think it means? It means you get through something. Praying through. I'm going to tell you something. Every time I start to pray, I don't want to pray. There's times I make myself pray because I know I need to do it, you see. There's times I, I get down to pray and this little voice says, you're too tired for this. All right. Little voice says, you know you're hungry. Especially when you fast a day or two. Man, that, that voice shouts loud. Now, I, I said this in a teaching the other day. They used to tell me that when you fast long term, after the third day, you're not hungry no more. First day, I need, I'm hungry. Second day, I'm still hungry. 
Third day, I could eat a hog. Fourth, fourth day, give me two hogs. I don't ever quit being hungry. I don't know where in the world they come up with the third day you quit being hungry. I'm as hungry the tenth day as I was the first day. You walk by me with a, a, a hamburger, I go and suck it in if you're not careful. I'm hungry. All right. Got that little voice. I don't always feel like doing what I do. But you know what? You got to press your way through. You got to pray. Your, when you pray through, you pray through doubt confusion, lies, the devil, people's opinions. You pray through all discouragement, everything the devil tells you can't do, you pray right through it. All of a sudden, you break out on the other side. You break out on the side of faith. And folks, I don't know how it works with you, but I know the moment I push through, it's almost like darkness dissipates and light shows up and ever word out of my mouth. I, I don't even have to think to say it. Uh, the Holy Ghost just prays it through me, to me, for me. Let's understand some march all you want to, but folks, wear your knees out in prayer before you wear your shoes out uh, and do it any walking. We, we, we got to understand this. We, we got to, you see, you see, you see. We need to understand authority. I was going to bring a pistol and I forgot my pistol. All right, dear Lord. And I usually keep it in the car, but I, I, I put it in the truck. Now I got it in the house. Anybody got a pistol on you? All right. Okay. Oh, dear Lord, look at the hands going up. Just in case y'all don't know, if you bring a pistol in this place without my permission, you broke the law. In the state of Missouri, I have to give you an okay to do it. Who was it? Put your hand up. <laughs> I'd have you in jail in five minutes. I'm just kidding. Well, I could, but I won't. I don't think I will. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to bring a pistol. I want to show you with that pistol, that's power. I got a little card in my billfold that gives me a right to carry a pistol. I know some pastors that carry them in the pulpit. Locally, I don't, not yet, <laughs> no, I don't. I got guys that watch out for me, so be careful how you treat me. Okay, <laughs> so, but you know what that p p p p pistol represents? Power, it represents power. But I've got a card in my billfold that says I have a right to carry it. That's my authority. Now, if you're a policeman, your badge is your sign of authority. Without that badge, you, you use that pistol, then you broke the law or you're out of line. But with that badge and that pistol, you got power and you got authority. Without the badge, you have no authority. Without the pistol, you have no power. You have authority without a pistol or without power, you can't accomplish anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are y'all understanding me now? All right. So just taking the analogy of a pistol and a badge or a card, it don't matter. One is a power. The other is the authority. They work together. The authority gives you the right to use the power. You say, what does that have to do with us? I'm so glad you asked. I've got the power of the Holy Ghost alive on the inside of me. I've got the power of the third person of the Godhead running through all of me. Oh, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. There's not a part of me that's not filled with the Holy Ghost. All the way down to my fingertips, uh, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. He didn't say, I'm going to give you a sprinkle. I'm going to give you a dip. Uh, he said, I'm going to baptize you. That word baptize means totally suffused. Uh, Ever part of my physical man, ever part of my spiritual man, ever part of my soulish man is full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, so I'm 
full of power. But he said, listen, I'm not going to leave it there. I'm going to give you authority. He said, not only am I going to give you that power, but he said, in my name, you can use that power and you can use that authority. In my name, you can cast out devils. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You get the authority and the power. You done won yourself a war. Give the Lord a hand clap because that's true. You walk around with your little gun or you walk around with whatever and you don't have authority to use it, you end up in prison. Remember that person had a demon in them? The disciples came up to cast them out. Them demons jumped on them and beat them up. They finally got loose. They went and got to asking the question, why couldn't we do it? You didn't have the right authority. That authority had not been given because a cross had not been experienced and resurrection was not a part of life. You can't have power without resurrection. In other words, you got to conquer death before you ever have control over death. Amen? All right. Jesus began to teach them. And he taught them. Of course, he said these things come by prayer and by fasting. You don't move into God's power without sacrifice. Another teaching here. That's something else needs to be taught. You don't just get it because you want it. Well, now, let me back up. I felt a little bit of a rebuke there. You can get it by want, but you can't operate in it with full advantage without the authority to do it, you see. So understanding authority and power is an important element of this teaching. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of powerful people that walk around defeated all the time. The cause of so many of God's people being continually bogged down in fear, doubt, and despair is because they don't understand their authority. You think running around this building is powerful. No, that's a manifestation of a power that's alive on the inside of you. There's nothing powerful about anybody dancing. Where's my amen at? Am I going to have to amen my own sermon? We're going to be here to one o'clock if I stop and say my own amens. If you amen me, we'll be out by 12. Uh-huh. Y'all kind of slow there. All right. But, 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 but we need to get this, you see. We need to get this. We're operating in this authority. We're operating in the power. And they, they are they're, they're, they're things that work together. People bogged down in fear. They're, it would amaze you at the number of God, God's uh, spirit-filled people that live in fear. They fear everything. Everything. It don't matter. They get in the car and ride down the road. They're afraid they're going to have a wreck and kill themselves. Every little spot on them is cancer. Every little hurt in the heart. Oh, dear God, I'm having a heart attack. You better thank God he doesn't do whatever you say do, what he, you, you say is, is, is wrong with you. You've been dead a long time ago. It's time to learn how to use our tongue. If you want to die with cancer, just start prophesying you got cancer. You want to die with a heart attack? Go ahead. Let every little thing that hits you be a heart attack. I'm not talking about ignorance here. You got to face the fact that when certain things happen to you, you need to have it checked out. But don't live in fear that the devil's going to kill you tomorrow. The devil can't kill you. You don't have that authority to kill you. You're a child of God. The only one that has authority over me is God. You getting what I'm saying? Amen. Some of y'all look at me like a, a deer in a headlight. Hallelujah. There's nothing new about this teaching. We just need to grab a hold of it. Maybe we've not heard it enough here lately, and we need to hear it. Maybe that's why there's so many defeated Pentecostal people is because they don't understand they've got authority over demons and devils. Maybe you're trying to deny there's even a demon or a devil out there. Let me tell you, I guarantee you, everybody in here, the devil showed up in your house this week. Yeah, he did. Unless you stopped him at the door. You plead the blood, speak the blood over him. But we got to grab a hold of this truth and this teaching and understand that they, you got power in you. You don't have to live in defeat. You don't have to live with that victim mentality. Let me, let me share some, something that our predecessors spoke into us. All over in the book of Hebrews, 
11, 32 through 29. Several verses of scriptures. I, I do not have time to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, everybody say through faith. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Who through faith, uh, all right, conquered kingdoms, administered justice, uh, and gain, everybody say gain. And gain what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle, routed foreign armies, women received back their dead, raised to life again. Oh my God, I like that. I, I just like that. They received them. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some face jeers. Some face flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins destitute, persecuted, mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. Uh, but notice this. Uh, all of that bunch, uh, they were all commended uh, for their faith. Uh, in other words, uh, it didn't matter what they faced. Uh, they kept their faith in God. Uh, it didn't matter what they went through. They kept their faith in God. Don't let fear control you. Don't let anger, hate, resentment. Don't let demons and devils control you by faith faith. Uh, you'll walk out of the fire by faith. Uh, you'll walk out of the lion's den by faith. Uh, you'll walk out of your valley by faith. Uh, you'll step out of this world into heaven uh, by faith. Uh, you'll tear down the strongholds of the enemy by faith. Uh, resurrection has been and will be always uh, a part of your life by faith faith. Uh, give the Lord a hand clap for it right now. <laughs> woo woo. Amen. They all were commended for their faith. Now let me ask you. Let me, it's got to be asked. Is that something someone would say about you? If right this moment in time Somebody wrote about your history. Would they say that? Would they say, I'm commending them for their faith. I saw them face things that I don't know if I could have held, held my head up, but they kept the faith. Would we as a church be commended for our faith? We kept believing. We never gave up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we all know that story. Well, I think most people knows it. I'm finding out some of our young people don't even know who Daniel is. They don't know who Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is. Isn't that amazing that people grow up in church and don't even know who some of the faith of our fathers, or the fathers of our faith were. But that's another story, you see. But you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We wouldn't bow to the God of the world. That old king set himself up a statue and said, y'all going to bow, you're going to burn. These three guys said, am I going to do it? They refused to bow. Everybody around them was supposed to have their head down with their eyes shut, bowing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just standing up there. Amen. I kind of like to think they were praising. But they standing there. All of a sudden, somebody punched somebody and said, you see those three over there? They're not standing. Somebody needs to go tell the king. Don't you know you got a busy body and ever bunch? We don't have any of those, do we? Amen. Don't have no busy. I just read where busy bodies are placed in the same category as whores and hollers and prostitutes. I didn't write it. Blame God, not me. I read it this morning. I thought, oh, my Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord. Man, that really went over good. I had somebody shouting on that one. 
Busybodies. What's a busybody? A body that's always in someone else's business. Look at somebody and say, get out of my business. Some of y'all glow. <laughs> Amen. Y'all to read this stuff sometimes. I'm going to shock y'all in a little while. I'm going, to, I'm going to start preaching verse by verse of the Word of God on Sunday morning. And I'm telling you what, get ready. You better bring some hard hats. Because some of it going to knock you upside the head. You better bring some steel-toed shoes. One guy used to come here and say, Preacher, every time I come, I have to have steel-toed shoes because you're just stepping all over me. Well, thank God you got somebody that'll preach enough word that, that you get stepped on every now and then. You need to know what God has to say, you see. These were all commended for their faith. That's one thing when I stand before anybody, I want to be commended for my faith, all right? If, if, if the Lord takes me before rapture, I don't want people to look at me Number one, uh, uh, you know, I don't look, oh, don't he look good? Dear Lord in heaven, how could I look good and be dead? But I was neither here nor there. Okay, I want people to be, to just commend me in my faith. I don't, I don't want anybody to talk about how much I travel, how long I preached, and how many people I blah, 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 blah. I don't care nothing about that. Just look at him and say, I'm commending him for his faith. He preached no matter what. He never stopped preaching that word of God. That's all I care anything about. Because when I stand before God, that's all that's going to count. No titles, no board memberships, that don't matter. When I stand before God, what's going to matter is I never quit, I never gave up. I just kept on the preaching and kept on the believing and kept on the shouting. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap because that's what it's all about. All right. I'm going to be bringing this thing in. I've got another part, but I don't have time to get into all of that part. All right, because it did in-depth teaching on authority. And, 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 but I'm going to give you these verses, and we'll tag back into this. Over in, in, in uh, Luke 10 and 19, I shared it last week. I have given you. All right, everybody say, I have given you. I have given you authority so that you can. Everybody say, I can. Say it again. I have given you authority so that you can what? Overcome what? All the power of the enemy. Woo! How many of you, the enemy has used any power against you this week? All right, all right now, all right. Somebody lying here. How many of you, the devil has used any power against you this week? Get your hand up now, get your hand up. All right, those of you that didn't put your hand up, you got some I don't have. All right, because a devil has come against me this week. Matter of fact, if I get to thinking about it, there's hardly ever a week goes by he don't show up with his ugly head. You say, well, do you get upset about it? Of course not. All right, I've been given authority, all right, so that I can overcome the power of the enemy. The only people that would say the enemy has never showed up at their house are people that don't really know who the enemy is. Are they, <laughs> are they not willing to admit all right, that he would show up. Because if you ever understand your enemy and you ever understand who he is, you'll understand jealousy is an enemy. Offense is your enemy. Anger is your enemy. Lust is your enemy. Lack of forgiveness, it's your enemy. Self-righteousness is your enemy. Legalism is your enemy. Lukewarmness is your enemy. Procrastination is your enemy. Lethargy is your enemy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just get what I'm saying. All of these things are the enemy of your spirituality. Because if either one of them is a portion of your life, then they are cheating you of being able to use the authority and the power that's been vested in you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so the enemy shows up regularly, but I have been given authority over everything I've just said, and that power of the enemy cannot hurt me because I have authority and I have a power. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Everybody at Messenger Church needs to get that. Okay? The word authority, and I will come back to this. Uh, just throw that up there, Jim, before I stop. Authority. I'm not going to quote that Greek word. It means rightful, actual, and unimpeded power to act. Now, 
some of you smart folks, tell me what impeded means. We don't have no smart folks here. Huh? What is impeded? Unimpeded. Let's do unimpeded. What does that mean? Huh? All right. Did y'all hear him? Unimpeded. I want y'all to get this. Somebody needs this. I didn't think about it. Holy Ghost said stop on that word. Okay, I'm going to let you say it on the mic. You, my friend. And hold on to the mic. Okay. All right. Okay. Somebody else got a definition. What is, okay. All righty. Unimpeded power. Unimpeded power. So, what, so put that with the word power in your own. And, and, and jack this microphone up. I, I can't hardly hear it myself. Amen. Get it up. I want everybody to hear this. Okay. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not like, are you on? You on? He going to turn you up. That's set for my voice, and I'm a little loud. All right, you got it. Say it now. You're helping me. All right. Well, an electrical would be, would be a resistance to something. Uh-huh. Power. Well, be, would be getting rid of that resistance and slowing the power down. All right. <laughs> Ain't that good stuff? Authority is getting rid of what's stopping the power from being used in your life. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> All right. We got Google going over here. Hallelujah. Thank God for Google. Okay. But we need to understand that. To act. Everybody say act. If you don't use the power that is in you, don't gripe when everything goes wrong in your life. If you don't walk free, because you are not using your authority. Don't blame it on me. Don't blame it on the devil. You've got power. You've got authority. The devil can't do anything you won't let him do because you have authority backed up by the power of the third person of the Godhead. Quit copping out and start taking authority over the devil that comes against you. Shout hallelujah. All right, all right. Now, control, or to possess, control, use, dispose of. Look at somebody and say, get rid of it. Say it again. Get rid of it. Stand up now, stand up. Everybody say, get rid of it. What is in your way of becoming what God has ordained you to become? Get rid of it. I'm not talking about a husband or a wife here. All right. Amen. Talk about maybe circumstances. I'm talking about ongoing. I hear, yes, Holy Spirit. I hear you. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Okay. Some of you have got these ongoing things in your life that has uh, been attached to you like a parasite. You know what a parasite is? A parasite is something that sucks energy, blood, life right out of you. There's something in your life that's been going on. I'm, I'm just talking as the Holy Spirit gives it to me. There's something going on in your life that's been sucking life out of you. Okay? It's a parasite. It can be anything. It can be offense. It can be anger. It can be jealousy. It, it, whatever. You, you, you've got to understand what it is before you ever walk free from it. But there's a parasitic spirit that runs rampant in the lives of a lot of people. And let me, let me help you here. You'll never overcome it by denying that it's there. Your denial is making you a slave to what's taking joy out of your life, peace out of your life. See, I'm talking about authority and power. We've got the power, folks, to overcome anything that comes our way. We are so powerful, and we've got the authority, but you've got to act on that authority. You've got to act on that authority. Amen. Anybody here have anyone that maybe you're, you're a leader or a boss, and, and you have people that work under you, Anybody? Anybody? All right, right here, right here. Amen, right here. Okay. Okay, Jeff, if you tell one of the employees that work under you to do something and they don't do it, do you give them a second chance? Give them two? What about three? They push it on three, don't they? See, I got to strike three things. 
First time grace. Second time mercy. Third time judgment. All right? God gives mercy, God gives grace, but there's also a judge inside of God. And that's why a lot of people, they don't want you to preach on judgment today. But folks, there's a hell that is just as real as there's a heaven. And sometimes I think I need to preach a whole message on hell. All right? People need to understand there is still a hell. And people are going there. You've got to act on that authority that God has given you. Now, Jeff, look at me. Look at me now. If you didn't do what you were hired to do, because somebody's over you, if you didn't keep those people under you in line, then what would happen to you? You would lose your position. What am I saying? If we don't use the power and the authority that God has given us as children of God to control that that is under us, we will lose our position. What I'm talking about, you see, positional is something people don't grasp sometimes. I'm a son of God. I'm a part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. I show all of that's who I am and that's who you are. But if I don't use the authority that has been given to me, then somebody else is going to come along and they will use that same authority to do what God raised me up to do. Nobody here can do what I do in this pulpit. Nobody. Only me. Now, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, there is somebody that can do what God called them to do to make sure what I'm doing is getting done. Are y'all understanding? I'm not dealing with pride. I'm not dealing with I'm the only one can do it. No, I'm talking about God gifted me to do something as John Rhodes. God gifted Alex Troy. God gifted you to do a ministry. No one can do what God raised you up to do the way you do it. But if you don't use God given authority, he will put someone in your place because God's job is going to get done. You got to get that. We got to get it. I've seen God's church being pew, pew. One day you're shouting around this place and making declarations of victory. And the next day you're so despondent and down and out. Now I'm not getting on to you. I'm not fussing at you. I'm trying to help you. I want you happy. I want you victorious. I want you assuming responsibility for yourself. Yourself. You're not responsible for me. You're responsible for yourself. As a shepherd, I've got to teach the sheep. And God holds me accountable by what he raised me up to teach or preach. But it's up to you to act on what I'm teaching. You're here today and you say, Pastor, Pastor, I've got this thing in my life. It may be one, two, and you can even deny it. I can't help it if you do. I just know what the Holy Spirit just said to me. You've got this parasitic element, this, 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 this thing in you. It doesn't mean you don't love God. It doesn't mean you're not saved, that you're not powerful. You re remember, powerful people lose out because they don't understand their authority. You say, I've got, I've got it. It can be physical, emotional, spiritual. It doesn't matter. I just know that that God has given authority to, to messenger church to help you climb up out of that. You're here and there's any element in your life that's keeping you from walking in what I'm talking about today. Walking free, walking as a victor, not a victim. If you're tired of the victim mentality, if you're tired of the defeatist attitude that you seem to wake up with every single day and you're ready to wake up with a victor attitude, I can do all th things through Christ who strengthens me.